Today I wanted to talk about how Redshift solved Ober's Paradox. And the reason I want to talk about it is because Big Bangers love to use Ober's Paradox as one of the reasons why the Big Bang has to be true. They claim that Ober's Paradox is the reason there has to be a finite universe, both finite in extent and finite in time. And if you go to Wikipedia now, you can see, read, the darkness of the night sky conflicts with the assumption of an infinite and eternal static universe. So yeah, the Big Bangers run the appropriate Wikipedia sections and they try to use whatever they can to prevent people from looking into a static and eternal infinite universe. And so and it's also used as an argument for an expanding universe because they conflate redshift with expansion. And they don't seem to realize that redshift is the evidence. That's what we observe. Expansion is a hypothesis. And as I show in other videos, a bad hypothesis. So essentially, Olber's paradox is only an argument for redshift, that redshift must exist, which it already does exist because the observations at this point are irrefutable. And it's very simple to see. If you look at a spectra of starlight, you can take a black body temperature from 3,000, 6,000, 12,000 Kelvin and look at the spectra and it has a certain amount of light in the visible range. It has some ultraviolet and infrared. But then you can look at the spectra as it gets redshifted of a typical star and you'll find that eventually it gets redshifted completely out of the visible range. So there's no more visible light. And then it can be further redshifted from the infrared range to the far infrared, and so on and so on. So what that ultimately means is the night sky is dark for every frequency, every wavelength of starlight. The only frequency where it's not, not dark is cosmic microwave background, which for some reason isn't redshifted. But that's a topic for a whole other video. So since redshift is a real thing and exists, Olber's paradox isn't a paradox anymore. Shift happens, Olber's paradox isn't real. And so it comes down to any viable cosmological model must include a viable model of redshift. And as I have discussed in previous videos, the redshift model based on an expanding universe isn't viable. One of the big issues is that particles, atoms, molecules, stars, black holes, galaxies, galactic clusters, even nebula, and probably plasma filaments, anywhere gravity, electromagnetic, magnetism, the weak or strong force works, there's no expansion going on. And we know that from observations. I'm not expanding now. I'm not just ballooning at the speed of light. So expansion doesn't work everywhere. And we're not even sure it works anywhere at all because the electromagnetic forces are so strong. So even if there were and a redshift based on expansion, it would be highly density dependent and irregular, not the smooth function that they claim. And then expansion's been disproven by the Tolman test, that based on the expansion model, stars in the distant past were much closer to us because the they emitted their light when it was close, and then the universe expanded, and the light took longer to get here, but eventually got here. But 
because they were much closer, the galaxy should be much larger than the night sky. 50 to 100 times larger at high redshifts. And maybe even 100 and 1,000 in future redshift observations. And we can tell that the, the stars aren't that big. They don't follow the expansion model. And then lastly, there's nothing there to expand. Einstein's expanding space-time is fictitious. It always has been fictitious. There's no dimensions or clocks in his imaginary substance. No, no real substance, no real dimensions and clocks, no expansion, no contraction, no curvature. It's all make-believe. It always has been make-believe, and yet physicists believe it. So as I said, the expansion model is extremely weak. And as a redshift model, it's no better than any of the tired light theories. And as I keep saying, I'm going through, going to do a video on tired light. I've been doing research. There's a lot of models to go through, um, but I'll get to it eventually, I promise. So as I said, shift happens. Olbers paradox doesn't get over it, and if you're a big banger, stop using it as an excuse for the big bang. So, to everybody else, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to know more about my quantum field theory and particle theory research, I have some books for sale. And as always, I want to thank my Patreon, PayPal, and Super Thanks supporters. You make a big difference in my life to give me a little extra money to help upgrade my equipment and such. So, thanks for watching.